Oh, yes. This is us doing the ribbon cutting uh, here in uh, Chatterhouse Street. So yeah. that's the ribbon cutting. So you can see Duncan and the rest of the guys. When I started with the company, the collaboration, the support and the commitment to making a difference and changing the, the trajectory we were on was remarkable. And, and it was a tough 18 months, two years, where we literally had to remake the company. We basically either sold or closed half the assets. And by the time we were finished, we were actually producing 10% more from those assets we reduced our safety incidents by 50% and our costs were down by 30%. The commitment to the cause was remarkable. When Mark started, the various parts of our organisation operated as, I guess, independent entities. And one of the first things that he did was to sort of start pooling the entire organisation together, that we would have greater collaboration within the business. The work we did to, to rebuild the company and set a new foundation is a foundation that can last us 30 to 50 years. Um, the industrialization of the company from being a mining company to a company that, that takes the best of modern industrial practices and applies them to mining, something unique, quite different. I think we've led the industry on that. And so today we look back and over nine years, we've delivered a 16% total shareholder return year on year. So if you invested a dollar in Anglo-American in 2013, it's now worth $4. When we look forward in the next 10 years, we're going to grow the business another 35%. We're going to grow financial margins by another 15 to 20%. No one else in the industry can talk about those things looking forward. And when you look at Kuveco, Woodsmith to come, Sakati and the other options we have, we really do have a, a pipeline of opportunities that are second to none in the industry. When Mark spoke about uh, people should be better off as a result of coming to work for us, he meant it in a deep sense. I do believe he cares about the company, I believe he cares about the industry, but he also cares about the workforce and the communities in which it operates. The key things that we've changed, uh, and I say we because I think we've created a team, that's the starting point. I think building a team is first. Well, I think safety is really important because if employees feel like you care, they see it through safety. Mark has given a new 21st century voice to mining. Few, if any, mining executives have done more to reposition mining in society in such a way that it is relevant, modern, and even seen as sympathetic. Reimagining mining to improve people's lives is about understanding shareholders, employees, communities, NGOs, whoever it may be, it's about making sure that we're bringing everybody along on the journey. And in my view, you can't create a sustainable company if you're not making a positive contribution to society as judged by each of those stakeholders. Mark has had a profound impact on the global mining industry, how the industry really drives towards looking at sustainable development, mining with principles. In thinking about mining and its role in society, the one thing we haven't done well as an industry is, is help people understand what we do. Basically, we provide the raw materials that make the world work. We've been mining the same way for 100 years. Today, compared to 100 years ago, it takes 16 times the amount of rock to move to produce a pound of copper, 16 times the amount of energy, and twice the amount of water. In future smart mining, we're trying to reset that equation, reduce the physical footprint, halve our water consumption, take another 30% back off that energy equation and become much more precise about mining. So in my view, future smart mining is first connected to all of our sustainability conversations, reducing our footprints, but what it helps you do is reduce your costs. So we're also producing a more sustainable company, lower operating costs, in real terms about 50%. And so it not only helps us 
make a, a mine out of something that might not otherwise be a mine, it gives us long-term margins, returns, and so it becomes a, a um, virtuous circle. I think he should be proud of the fact that his impact hasn't just been felt by us within the Anglo-American group, but by our industry as a whole. He has now established himself as the leading mining statesman in the world. My job in taking us to where we are today um, is um, a reflection of what was needed, where we needed to go, and it may or may not be the best place, but from here we have to go to a different place again, and that will need different skills, uh, different relationships, and so I think Duncan's the perfect choice today because it's Duncan. And the team and the people that will build those relationships will reflect his character and I think that's entirely appropriate and it's the right way to take the business. I think we've got the people, I think we've got the understanding and we've got the inquisitive desire to keep going. I won't remember him for his skills as a miner. I won't remember him as a leader of uh, an institution. I will remember him as a leader of society. I don't say it lightly, but I would say that he's a legend now in his own lifetime. I'd like to be remembered uh, as someone that made a difference, that listened and tried to take into account people's views in the organisation and what we should be, but at the same time wasn't scared to make the decision and be held accountable for that decision. That for me would be a nice way to be remembered.